cometh. This Louisiana story is a 20th century whirlwind romance between men and black gold that so far they've pursued with 22,000 wells that reach down into history to the oil whose abundance has been influenced by the river. Looked at from space, the Mississippi can be seen pouring plumes of silt into the waiting gulf, 400 million tons of it in a year. The river slows as it meets the sea and begins to unload its cargo as it has done for millions of years. Close to its mouth, the heaviest component, sand, is deposited. Being coarse, it forms loosely packed sandbars that will eventually turn to sandstone. Further out, finer particles begin to settle. These stick together to form compact, glutinous clays. Where the sediments begin to clear, clouds of microscopic plants develop, nourished by the dissolved nutrients in the river water. As they die and accumulate on the sea floor, a rich mixture of sediments and organic ooze is produced. This is potential oil if decomposition is prevented by rapid burial or oxygen deficient water. Rivers loaded with sediment continually build and adjust their courses so the original deposits are quickly covered by a variety of other layers. The new sediments compress those underneath, and the delta sinks. Over a thousand feet below, the pressure generates heat. Over millions of years, the sediments change. Clay is compressed and becomes shale, and the organic ooze cooks, forming oil. Droplets of this oil then migrate through the porous sandstone. It's a process that gathers large concentrations of oil, trapping them beneath non-porous shales. Fifty years ago, a fortune in oil lay hidden beneath the delta, but the Mississippi covered its tracks so well that the oil was difficult to find. But find it, they did. Louisiana became part of the fuel tank of the United States. From the Mississippi marshes so far, 12 billion barrels of oil and 113 trillion cubic feet of natural gas have been won from the earth. So how was it found? The answer came with a pinch of salt. In 1901, a geologist called Anthony Lucas, looking for salt, struck oil and gas when he drilled into one or two rather special low hills in the delta. One such hill, called Avery Island, sits like a low iceberg in the marsh. It was well known to local Indians as a place to collect rock salt. The mound was almost all pure salt. Geologists today call such formations salt domes, and oil is often found alongside them. Companies looking for salt found more than a pinch. And those seeking oil found more than anyone would have believed. The origin of both lay in the ancient seas. At about the time the Gulf of Mexico began to form, enormous briny lagoons filled the developing basin. In the hot climate, evaporation reduced the shallow sea to thick deposits of salt. It seems that the sea washed across the subsiding basin many times, each flood adding its own contribution until the basin was completely filled with salt. Its presence is not obvious today because it's covered with limestone and buried beneath six miles of other sediments. Salt has a lower density than the overlying rocks. Under pressure, it behaves like a fluid, so it rises up through the rocks. As it pushes upwards, it bends the overlying strata. Oil also tends to flow upwards, so it eventually collects around the salt. If a salt dome can be located, it's relatively easy to find the oil. What was not always so easy was to find the salt dome. Most of them don't break the flat surface of the marsh. The story of the subsequent hunt for the 300 or so hidden salt domes is written on the marsh itself. Tractor-like marsh buggies were no respecters of this environment. 
In their ignorance, the prospectors left a permanent record of their quest for oil. Tracks that in places are eroding into open water. The first step was to dig a canal to take in the oil rig and supply it. Now there are some 12,000 miles of supply canals and a number of much larger shipping canals that allow easier transport along the coast and to and from the sea. What that's really done is to destroy the marsh. The canals allowed ocean water to flood in on the tide. The excess salt killed many of the marsh grasses, the plants whose roots held the land together. The dredged mud blocks the drainage, preventing toxic substances, natural and artificial, from washing away to the sea, and that too killed the plant life. 